What about the pyramids of Giza? How were 2.3 million blocks of stone, most weighing more than two tons, shaped, moved, and fitted together? For those ancient astronaut theorists who say that the pyramids were built with anti-gravity devices, or it was levitation, and they were cut with lasers, those are all wonderful ideas. But there's no evidence. Aliens did not build the pyramids. Egyptians built the pyramids. We have art in ancient Egypt that shows Egyptians using pretty basic technology, moving big rocks around, carving big rocks, straightening rocks, flattening out their surfaces. We have that. Of course, the humans did the job. No extraterrestrials constructed the pyramid, but they had the help, I mean, from engineering-wise, the help, uh, the advice from the others. All the dirty job, that's what we did. If the Egyptians had plans from aliens, there's one perfect way to shut skeptics up and prove your point. Let's see the plans. Where are those plans? Another real problem with the ancient astronauts theory is what the heck were they here to accomplish? Teaching our ancestors to build pyramids is less help than opening a small community college and teaching them to have glass lenses and the germ theory of disease and a printing press. If there were no aliens in Egypt, what about the stone heads of Easter Island? In 1968, von Däniken wondered if aliens had taught the islanders to use a mysterious force to move the statues. Or, as generations of archaeologists have insisted, could a few dozen men and some grass rope actually do the job? In this case, von Däniken has thrown in the towel. Easter Island has nothing to do with extraterrestrials. When I wrote Chariots of the Gods, I still had the idea. It might have to do with extraterrestrials. In the meantime, I know this is absolutely made by humans. In March 1968, I was attacked by all serious personalities. Now it is my character to defend. When I feel attacked later, I learned, of course, many of these attacks were correct. The critics were right, and I was not right. In 1968, von Däniken seemed to suggest that the mysterious Nazca lines in Peru were like landing strips for alien craft. The lines and artwork are astonishing, but the desert floor has been proven to be too soft to support planes landing. So whatever the lines are for, they're not landing strips. To ancient astronaut theorists, Nazca is still a place of mystery, but they're not certain what the mystery is. Maybe there's strange radiation or magnetic anomalies left by alien machines. Something is wrong in Nazca, but we don't know what. I know the archaeologists, they are wonderful, but they do not ask such silly questions as I come up with measuring of changing of magnetic fields, all that. So that's my brain. For von Daniken, one of the best proofs of his theory lies here, in a stone pyramid in Palenque, Mexico, and the stone sarcophagus of Lord Pakal, a Mayan ruler who died 1,400 years ago. To von Daniken, the resemblance to a 1963 astronaut in a space capsule is remarkable. Is this proof that a Mayan ruler flew in a small rocket with technology provided by aliens. He uses his two hands to manipulate control. On his nose is something like a mask. He's sitting on a chair. He uses the heel of his left foot on a sort of pedal. And outside the frame, you see something like a linking flam. I love the fact that Pakal's got his foot on a pedal. Is that like the transmission? Is that the clutch? Pakal's buddies who've come from another star system. They have amazing technology. 
And yet the rocket that they put Pakal in has smoke and flames coming out of it based on chemical propulsion systems that the Chinese invented 2,000 years ago. That's as far as they've gotten. The Maya language now can be translated in large measure by specialists. That's the spirit, the essence of Lord Pakal, and he is between heaven, which is at the top of the lid, and the subterranean world below, because he's just died, and now he is ascending to heaven. And I know and respect the archaeological results, but I'm just not satisfied with it. But mainstream scientists continue to chip away at the ancient astronaut theory with new technology undreamed of in 1968. We can do our archaeology more finely, saving the little pollen grains, saving the little samples that would have had maybe traces of their exhaust from their spaceship. We see no signs of anything extraterrestrial. Our ancestors thought that building strange things would get the gods to be nice to them. They worked hard, they used ingenuity and guts, and they didn't need any aliens helping them. At one point, I was an ancient astronaut believer. As time went on, I realized if you believe that there were aliens, you start to see aliens. But if you don't believe in aliens, suddenly it opens up a world of other explanations. If, if, if somebody were to find definitive evidence that, yeah, in antiquity, we were visited by extraterrestrial aliens, Eric Von Donegan would not be as thrilled as me. The deal is, the difference is, he's willing to accept evidence, and I'm not. 